All right, what's going on, everybody? Doc here, uh, Average Gamer Guys. Um, so we've been putting out a couple videos uh, based on the uh, each leader builds. Uh, we're going to have a couple more uploading. They should be uploaded about the same time this goes up. Uh, but one thing I wanted to do, we've touched on a lot of um, pretty specific topics uh, as far as each build, kind of the best way to set up uh, each deck. What I did want to do, though, is just do a real basic how to build uh, a deck in Halo Wars 2 Blitz mode. Um, this is going to cover just very basic strategy for a deck, um, kind of the things that you want to look out for, uh, how you kind of want to structure the deck, um, and obviously, you know, there is definitely some ways to improve each of these decks uh, and to kind of um, personalize them to your play style, uh, but overall there's some basic strategies that I kind of wanted to cover in a quick video, um, and this should hold throughout this beta, and then also when this game comes out, obviously there's going to be some card balance changes, uh, and some other things like that. But this should really help you kind of get into the groove, especially if you're just picking up the game, you didn't get a chance to play the beta, or you just downloaded it for whatever reason, and you're hopping into it. Um, this will kind of give you the base strategies. One thing I will say from the very beginning, um, the base decks that they have already uh, set up in here for each of the leaders, they're not bad. Uh, they're pretty good. They kind of uh, get to what you need to get to. They're pretty well balanced. Um, but we're going to kind of just go from scratch and, and just again talk real basic tips uh, for those of you out there kind of first jumping into this game and need a little bit of help, want to craft your own deck but aren't really sure uh, kind of things to be looking out for, so we'll do, do that here. Um, again, you can go into any leader. Each leader is going to have uh, three uh, deck slots. The first one is going to be uh, just the base army that they come with unless you modify it, uh, of course. And so uh, i just going to jump into Cutter just as a, as a great example, again, uh, these tips will work either for the UNSC or the banished leaders, uh, either side, and again, just basic strategies here. Uh, so we'll hop into created a deck. Uh, first thing to note off the bat, um, you can hit right trigger and show your deck stats. Uh, this is important because uh, it's going to give you some stuff right up front to kind of understand your deck and how it sets up. Starting army is important, not so much to be able to see the units, uh, but if you come in here and you have a highlighted unit uh, that is blue, uh, it's going to tell you uh, what power that unit has, uh, whether it be cloak or guard or what it's essentially what special ability. Uh, card distribution, that's going to be the number of units compared to the number of powers uh, for a total of 12. Uh, so those two numbers will add up to 12, uh, and that's another great uh, little thing that you can take a look at to make sure you have a decent balance. Typically what uh, me and Sloth have liked to do is run about a 10 to 2 balance, just kind of dependent on the powers uh, for that leader though. Some are definitely better than others, and when you're kind of looking at it, as you kind of scroll across, you'll see average level. That takes a look at the 12 cards that are currently set up in the deck and it uh, determines what level each of those specific cards is and gives you an average level. So say all of your cards uh, are level two, your average level is gonna be two. If you have a mix of levels one and two, depending on that mix, say you've got an even one, uh, even six and six, you're gonna get a 1.5 average level. And then unit counters kind of tells you uh, how your units stack up, how many infantry, how many vehicles, and then how many air units. And then the chart, uh, and we'll, we'll go to this after we kind of throw a quick deck together. Uh, on the right-hand side, your card energy cost is just going to show you kind of how your deck uh, ramps up. Here you want a general curve from 1 all the way up to 12. That way you're showing uh, you know, a good progression of energy. You don't want too many that are too high or too many that are too low. And uh, Like I said, a nice steady progression. You'll kind of see that when we get through uh, and actually have the deck built. So once you come in here, you can hit A. One thing before you start picking any cards that I recommend, you can hit Y to change the starting army. You'll see it in the bottom left-hand corner. Cutter uh, in this version has the Phoenix setup, which is a Nightingale, and then some Marines, and then also the Raider setup, which is three Warthogs. Again, dependent on play style, we do have, uh, as soon as we can, we're getting up the rest of those uh, deck builds, so check those out if you want more specifics on which starting army. Uh, but try out both, see which one you like. I'm not sure in the full release of the game if they're going to offer more starting armies. I kind of hope they do, maybe give you three options um, or kind of switch some of these up a little bit. Personally, I think Cutters, both starting armies are a little weak, uh, to be honest, comparative to some of the other options you get from some of the leaders. But I'll, I'll describe that more uh, over in the Cutter video uh, if you want to go over there and check that out. 
So as we jump into here again, uh, a few basic tips. Again, like I said, you're going to want to have a nice uh, even spread of units, uh, energy costs uh, throughout your deck and throughout your uh, your 12 slots and then again a nice mix of powers again about 10 to 2 units to powers again depending on what cards you have unlocked uh, and what powers you have and for each leader uh, the one thing I, I highly recommend just keep in mind that I am describing these decks and this deck build with the understanding that you and your team if you're playing 1v1 is obviously just yourself if you're playing twos or threes the whole premise uh, of the game is obviously to, obviously to capture points, but you also want to have a heavy focus on picking up energy. So I'm going to make some specific recommendations as far as types of units to have with that focus in mind. For Cutter, for instance, uh, I'm probably going to pick up the Jackrabbit. Quick 20 unit energy, uh, 20 energy unit, excuse me. Something fast that can move around the battlefield, quick to destroy energy cores and pick up energy for you. So that is a kind of a prime spot to put them in you want to have either the banished or the unsc you want to have your vehicle killer and that uh, for the unsc is the cyclops again if you're unfamiliar rock paper scissors type set up a little bit uh red is the means that the unit is can attack that unit but is very bad green means it's going to have the best fighting chance against that unit if it's grayed out like the air unit for the cyclops here means it can't target it and the other color you'll see will be yellow, which means it's kind of neutral. Um, so you want to have a, a cheap unit, either the Hunters or the Cyclops. Absolutely recommend to be able to take down uh, your vehicle units. Also got to have the Wolverine. Some version of the Wolverine or some version of a unit that can take down and very easily deal with air. Uh, for the UNSC side, it's the, it's the Wolverine. Uh, for, the, for the Banished side, it is the Reavers. You got to have something, um, and the reason I say that is because there's there's a lot of units that are kind of neutral against air, and there are very few that are exceptional against air. You got to have that exceptional against air unit, uh, because air units are going to come into play for sure, and everybody's going to have a few that you definitely want to be able to target and destroy quickly. So having that anti-air unit in there uh, is absolute recommendation. Something that we also talk about talk about a lot. You're going to see the Nightingale coming in here. Some kind of detect or support unit. Uh, the, the fact that the Nightingale and on the uh, Banish side, uh, the Engineer does both. Both detects and supports supports by healing your units. This is kind of longevity for your units. And again, another easy, cheap 50 energy card to kind of start powering your curve up a little bit um, to get that going. Uh, and again, the detect and support capabilities of these units is why you want it in the deck this is just going to keep your stronger units your higher health units around on the battlefield longer and even your smaller units too for the fact that it's just consistently healing uh, while it's there and then detecting those units um, that that have the cloak ability it is that is huge so absolutely look out to make sure you have a unit or two that has uh, at least that detectability now here again um, you can always make these swaps uh, a quick build I would probably throw in uh, just to change some things up uh, because I have the reactive Cyclops open I might take Cyclops out uh, throw the reactive Cyclops in a little bit more energy is okay the extra reflectability is actually quite good um, so you're just again making sure you have a good balance of units that are strong against a specific type uh, of unit uh, for your opponent's side Warthog another quick cheap unit that you can drop in for 60 energy Wolverines again, this would be something if you had Vanguard Wolverines or you have an upgraded version of some of these lower ones By all means feel free to make the swap in maybe I take the Wolverines out uh, and Put the Vanguard Wolverines for that Russian detectability rush if you're not familiar Means you can drop this unit in and it won't suffer from that fatigue It won't come in at half health and it won't deal half damage It can come in full health full damage right away as soon as you drop it anywhere on the map it Doesn't just have to be at your base um, you'll see that we're kind of ramping the energy up as we kind of pick through these and talk through uh, some small specifics uh, And that's okay Low energy when I talk low energy I'm talking about the 80s and below because you're gonna make 80 energy pretty quickly anything in the 50s You're gonna drop almost instantaneous instantaneously whenever you get it um, so it, it's uh, That's kind of the consideration again focused around the idea that you're gonna be grabbing energy uh, pretty quickly 
uh, I always recommend having some type of mid-tier uh, flying unit in there, uh, flying vehicle in there. Uh, just one because it's going to be pretty decent against air. Uh, it's going to usually be able to attack everything. And it is just a good balance uh, of units across the board to have. Plus at 80 energy for the Hornet. Uh, absolutely recommend. Uh, as we kind of hop over, the Kodiak uh, and the Blisterback are the two siege units uh, within this game uh, for the Banish and then obviously for the UNSC side. I absolutely 100% recommend always having one of these units in. You'll see how strong it is against infantry and vehicles. It can attack air. Really, you don't see that too much. Uh, and you're almost always going to be dropping these in and locking them down. These are great once you have a point secured. You drop these above the point, you throw them down. 100 energy, it's about midway, so it's a good curve again. Uh, and you're going to have these pretty consistently, especially as you get toward the later game. You get two or three of these down over a point that you've been defending. They're going to do a lot of work for you. They're going to help you really defend that point. So absolutely recommend having something in there for that. And I always put in a heavy tank-like unit. Again, the capability to destroy infantry and other vehicles and then even uh, be neutral against the air makes this a great all-around unit. The Wraith on the uh, Banish side is also something I 100% recommend. So at this point, we've got, a, we've got, I think, five slots left, and we're just going to keep continuing. Again, we have some cards. We have the majority of the cards uh, unlocked for the beta, which is nice. So I would make some 1Z, 2Z swaps. Oh, I forgot to add the Kodiak. Uh, so we'd make some 1Z, 2Z swaps. I would probably take the Stealth Kodiak over the regular Kodiak just for the additional cloak ability. And really, 10, 20, 30 energy is not a whole lot when you really consider uh, the grand scheme of the game. So that, that makes uh, sense to be able to throw that in. As we kind of continue through, uh, we kind of when you get to the last, the third page, this is really going to be where your heavy hitter units are going to be. And I always recommend having two or three of these. This is going to be what later in the game uh, kind of turns the game for you if you're kind of down on points because you've had a little bit more energy focus, which is totally okay. Uh, a lot of times when we play games, especially twos and threes, the initial start of the game, we may grab a few points here or there, uh, but a lot of times we'll kind of pull our armies back. Um, we won't commit them fully uh, because we're going to get energy. When we're doing that, we're probably giving up some points, 30, 40, 50 total points. But then because we're ramping up energy so quickly, uh, we're able to call in these heavier units. You'd be surprised how strong a vulture is. A vulture really can destroy uh, any starting army plus a little bit of whatever they dropped in if they're starved for energy and energy uh, consumption then this vulture is probably going to destroy those units and then it's probably going to sit on that point and it's probably going to hold it for you for quite a while uh, so that's why i always recommend having these higher end units plus when you really have high energy rolling through uh, near the end of the game you're going to be dropping these things regularly and often so i 100 percent always recommend having some top tier units for unsc side I'm going to be honest, not as many options, I think, um, but there are some good ones, and obviously it is very dependent on the leader. Cutter here, uh, really, you got to have the Vulture, in my opinion, uh, just a really tank of a unit. Um, it can be, for those of you, you know, maybe you have some card unlocks, uh, Trooper Hornet and Trooper Warthog, kind of a mix, one or the other. I think I would personally take the Trooper Hornet, uh, just for the sole fact of, it seems to be a little bit better against the vehicles uh, and the air unit. Uh, they do move faster, so that is a consideration if you're going to try to, you know, move a couple quick units to go grab some points. I uh, recommend having those units that can do that. Trooper Hornet definitely fills the slot here. So we have two slots left, and this is where I would again throw in about two powers. Uh, usually try to pick one high-end power and then one kind of near the 100, 90 to 100 range. Uh, for Cutter here, we have Close Air Support, which is, he brings in a gunship of Pelicans. Again, typically each leader has one power that's going to do a big area damage. That's something you absolutely want, whether it be the Mac Blast, whether it be Eradication. Something that you can bring in pretty consistently, you know, around generally under the 200 uh, energy mark. That's going to really probably turn a tide if somebody's either bringing, assaulting a point that you're holding, or you're moving in to take a point and they got a lot of units stacked up there. You're going to want that energy or that damage dealing energy uh, card to be able to come down 
deal some big damage and help swing that a point in that battle in your favor. So I absolutely recommend, recommend having a high end there. For me and Sloth's experience, depending on obviously what they change uh, from the beta to the actual full release of the game, we're not sold on these real heavy uh, legendary strikes. So for the UNSC you have the Condor and then for the, um, for the Banish you have the Scarab. I'm not huge on these because to be honest with you, how much damage they do, how slow they move, the damage is great if it drops in over a bunch of units and they just sit there. But a lot of people, and as you become more seasoned in the game, you're gonna find that as soon as you see this uh, unit drop in, if you just simply pick your units up, move them off the point, this thing's gonna kinda hover there, it might follow you a little bit, it's gonna get a few kills. Same thing with the Scarab. And then after that, you're just gonna be able to outrun it and move past it and then, and then eventually it'll die because it only comes in for about, uh, I think it's about 90 seconds or so. So again, great. But for the energy cost, I think it's too high. I absolutely think it's too high. Now, if they do uh, make a switch when they release the full uh, version of this game and they drop this down into the mid 200s to low 200s, then definitely I think this could be your top end uh, power that you'd want to bring in. So that again leaves us with one slot for one other power. Uh, Cutter's kind of tough. Um, Archer missiles is something, that's kind of the range that you want to find. Again, you're looking for a good overall curve with some stuff kind of in the low end, some quick units to grab energy, uh, units that are specific to each uh, type that have an advantage. Uh, so again, Cyclops, your Wolverines, uh, your Reavers, your Hunters, those things that are going to be really good against specific unit types. Um, and then kind of just have your curve keep going up and try to fill it out again with your siege unit and some type of heavier tank unit that's going to be able to deal a lot of damage uh, over the course of the long battle. So here I'll throw the archer missiles in. They're not terrible. Uh, you get two blasts of missiles in a specified direction. So deal good damage, uh, drop in. And for 100 energy, this is one of those things where if you're like close to maybe winning the game or you're close to defending a point and you don't want to sacrifice your army, maybe you don't have a perfect unit to drop in. Um, or you're just kind of waiting for the next energy drop, and you got 100 energy, or your, you know, your friendly uh, units uh, that you're playing with are going to attack a point and need a little bit of assist. You don't want to throw a unit over there. A mid-tier power, you know, in the 90s to the 100 range, uh, is going to be able to help that uh, your teammate out uh, and probably end up taking that point. So again, just some, a, a real basic overview of how we would look at the deck. We'll go back to the deck stats now that we have this leveled out. Um, and it works out really perfectly. Again, card distribution, about 10 units, two powers. You can play with this. Again, if you're not a big fan of the powers or you're not really understanding how to use them, units are always good to put in that place. I wouldn't go really any more than two powers, maybe three dependent, um, but really no more than that because a lot of times those are single use powers. Uh, once those units are gone or that power is over, I mean, it's a one shot and then you're left with nothing. Whereas if you drop units in there, you're going to have units that can deal damage, grab energy for you, grab points for you. So that's really going to be where your lasting uh, effects are going to come from. It worked out perfectly. Average level uh, 1.5, just like we talked about. As you can see, unit counters, I've got a pretty good balance between uh, infantry, uh, the vehicles, and the air. You're always going to see unit counters probably for the air side be a little bit lower just because some stuff can attack those and a lot of things are kind of neutral against them, uh, which again is why I 100% recommend having that specific unit that's great uh, against taking down the air. And then you'll see kind of a general curve, or one obviously uh, starting off low at 20 energy, but everything else kind of generally trending up uh, with that one higher card right at the end, which is our kind of our, f our finish spell. Uh, our finished power um, to kind of help us uh, fight through that. So uh, again, I hope this was some good tips for you. This is kind of the base deck as it sets up right now. Uh, again, feel free to play around with this, but just some basic tips to kind of get you going if you're jumping in uh, either to the beta the rest of this week or when the full game releases, a lot of these techniques and tips are going to stay the absolute same because uh, I don't see them completely changing the dynamic of this mode at this point. Uh, obviously, some units will get better and worse. Please go ahead, if you enjoyed this, leave a like. Leave your comments down below if I missed anything or if you got any other tips for players that are coming in or are new. Um, if you are interested, you got a little bit of time in the game, or you want a specific build for a specific leader, uh, we'll have all uh, of the leaders up here in the next day or so. So please go check those out. We'll have specific deck builds uh, 
with specific strategies and talk more specific into each card uh, that way to give you a better feel if you have unlocked some of the stuff and you're not sure uh, which one you should use or kind of how you should balance your deck um, i've been doc this is average camera guys i hope you guys enjoyed and we'll catch you next time